Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video with the uh, with the VFR 800. Now, um, what we're going to be doing in this video isn't necessarily a VFR related uh, topic. Um, it just happens to be that I need to carry out this process on my VFR, but this can be used for, for absolutely anything um, such as this. Uh, you know, on cars, other bikes, whatever. Um, it makes no odds whatsoever. Um, and what we are going to be doing uh, in this video is carrying out a thread repair. So these um, these four holes here, which are threaded, um, are where the grab rails, the uh, the passenger grab rails, bolt on. Um, obviously, you would have the bodywork on and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, they, they basically bolt on here. Now, if I pull, uh, in fact, no, I won't pull out yet. Uh, but if you look, you can see that um, a previous owner has put a stack of washers uh, underneath the bolt head on this one. It should be like that. It should be um, this little spacer, then a washer, then the bolt head. But for some reason, this one had. Um, a load of washers on and you can see as well at some point someone's had to get some grips or something onto it to get it off and it's looking pretty uh, poor anyway uh, if I pull the if I pull the bolt out take the hardware off and pop that to one side and have a look at the bolt itself you can see that it's actually absolutely screwed um, uh, obviously excuse the pun uh, but uh, yeah that that bolt is is knackered um, and consequently the thread inside here is is knackered as well if I take the other bolt which is fine screw it into the into a good thread you can see you know it goes in and out perfectly fine however if I take the same bolt and try and screw it in here it it, it it's not really in fact it's there that's as far as it's gone and then it's stopped already so i'm not going to force it but yeah so what we need to do is we need to repair this now these bolts i am going to replace um they're the standard honda ones those ones and i'm going to replace them with some uh stainless steel ones these are pretty much identical just um stainless steel and obviously none of the threads on these are damaged so yeah what we need to do is uh get the equipment out that we're going to use to affect this repair and uh, start getting on with it <laughs> Okay, so the process by which to uh, to fix this problem is pretty straightforward, but you do need a, a couple of things in order to do it. And what I've got here, I've got a uh, heli coil repair kit. Now this is a fairly comprehensive kit, which includes many different sizes um, of repair. As you can see, we've got M5 by 0.8, M6 by 1.0, M8 by 1.25, M10 by 1.2 uh, by 1.5 and m12 by 1.75 which are all pretty standard um you know sizes bolt sizes and thread thread pictures um now this one i happen to know is an m8 by 1.25 so this is the section of the kit that we're going to use so if i um pop this down here and have a look at what we've got in the kit we've got a drill bit now this drill bit won't be m8 it will actually be larger than the hole that we're going to drill because what we're going to do is open it up and remove all the old damaged threads we have a tap again this will be larger than uh than uh, you know the um m8 bolt um because what we are then going to fit after we've tapped it is what's known as a heli coil insert now if i get one of these out of the packet and have a look that is what it looks like they're stainless steel and it's basically just a it looks like a spring uh, a very compressed spring it's just coiled tightly coiled wire with a little tang in the but was known as a tang at the bottom and then what we do is we drill out the old threads tap the hole to this size and then we can fit this heli coil which is we do by using this little tool here you basically just pop the heli coil on it and then you can use this to wind it in and then that the inside of that heli coil will be m8 
and that's basically the way the system works. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. The other little tool that's in here, this little thing here, is for snapping off the tang once you've finished. Now, obviously, if this is going into a blind hole, you don't need to worry about the tang so much um, because the bolt isn't going all the way through it anyway. Um, but obviously, it depends how deep the blind hole is because you only the, the helicoil only goes that far. Um, if the blind hole is a lot deeper and you need it to be that deep, then you will need to take the tang off. Okay, so all of that said and done, let's um, let's actually have a look at the process. Okay, before we uh, before we actually begin drilling out, I just want to cover the bolts and the tap sizes and stuff like that uh, before we move on. Now, obviously, what you need to do is ensure that the um, the bolt matches the tap that you're going to use. Um, you can do that in a couple of ways. You, if you've got a thread pitch gauge such as this, as you can see, it's got all different little thread pitches. You can see them all labelled on the other side there. You can use one of those, or even simpler. Get your tap, hold your bolt against it, and you can see that the thread pitch matches, uh, just like so. So we know that that's the right one, and we know that we're uh, we're going to be tapping and repairing the thread and making it so that it is you know fit for the bolts that we're going to be using. Okay, so if I put that down to one side, what we can do now is we can actually start carrying out the repair. Now I've got the drill bit that matches that part of the kit, um, matches this tap. Um, and matches the helicoils that we're going to use and we're going to start by drilling out the old damaged threads okay now this isn't a blind hole this goes all the way through so it, it does make our life a little bit easier obviously with a blind hole um, we can only go so deep and then we, we have to, you know we have to stop and we have to clear all the swarf out and all that good stuff but we won't have that problem here because it's not a blind hole so I've got my drill bit fitted into my drill and all we're going to do is gently and drill it out. And there we go. That is all the old damage threads drilled out and as you can see Hopefully you can it'll pick up on the camera. You can see that there's no thread in there whatsoever. We've got a nice clean hole ready to be retapped. Okay, so we now have our tap out of the kit and we have it in our tap handle. Now this tap handle doesn't come in the uh, in the kit. Uh, you don't actually get one, uh, which is odd. Um, so you will need to factor that in if you want to get this kit. You would need a, a tap handle as well. Now this tap handle happens to be older than I am. As you can see, it's quite uh, it's quite old, but you know it does exactly what it needs to do. So there we go. We're, we're ready to uh, start tapping now. What we've got here, a little bit of engine oil uh, in my oil can, and I'm just going to lightly lubricate it before we before we start thread cutting. And then simply a case of getting it in, getting it started. Now it will self-guide into the hole, uh, as you would expect. And then start cutting a thread simply by turning the handle, turn it a few rotations and then back it off quarter turn just to break off the swarf and clear it out down the flutes of the tap. And you can add a little bit more oil if you need to. And all we're going to do is basically keep going till we've tapped all the way down the hole. Not quite through yet. Thank you. 
feels like we're through now. And yeah, it's gone, it's gone nice and loose, so we've got a nice thread. And now what we can do is wind it out. And there we are, and there is all the swarf that we've captured in the oil. Right, so what we'll do now is just clean these up. Uh, I'll just get a bit of workshop rag and just um, a bit of oil and just run it through just to clean all the uh, swarf out. But as you can see, we have a lovely clean thread inside the hole now, which is exactly what we're after. So now that is ready to receive a helicoil insert. So uh, I'll get this all clean and then we can move on to fitting the insert. Right, so that's all that cleaned up, all the swarf removed. What we can do now is uh, get the actual insert fitted. Now, as I said earlier, it was a case of popping the insert into the tool like that so that the tang sits in the uh, in a slot just like so. And then all we do is screw it down just like so as you can see it goes in there lovely and easy and we're going to sit it so that it's just below the surface just like that and then you can remove the tool and then all that remains is the tang needs to be removed uh, if we don't remove the tang then the bolt will try and push it out and that could dislodge the bottom uh, the bottom of the uh, the, well, the bottom thread uh, of the helicoil so all we do is we put that in there Get a little hammer, give it a tap, just like that. And then the tang is just, well, I'll get that in a moment. And there we are, that is literally it feared. Um, it's not difficult at all, as you can see, it's really, really, really straightforward. Um, very difficult to actually get wrong, uh, if, uh, if I'm being honest. Now, if I grab <coughs> the bolts that I've got, to replace the factory ones. There we go, look at that, that goes in there. Absolutely lovely. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted and that repair will last for years. You know, it's, it's a permanent repair. Right then. That is a helicoil insert repair completed on my uh, on my VFR. So now I can get the seat unit back on, I can get the grab rails on, and they'll be absolutely spot on now. Uh, and obviously fit four new bolts, uh, four new shiny stainless steel ones. Now this is obviously the helicoil insert system. There is other systems that you can use to repair uh, threads such as this. Um, time certs are an excellent option. The only thing with time certs is they're incredibly expensive and would be massively overkill for a, for a task such as this. To give you an example, I used time certs to repair strip threads in an aluminium engine block once, um, and that allowed me to then uh, torque the head back onto the block. And they are absolutely perfect for that, um, for that purpose and worth the cost investment in that. Um, for something such as this, it would be massively over the top. Um, Helicoil inserts are literally pence, whereas time certs are probably in the region of 20 to 30 times the amount. But the actual kits themselves cost quite a bit. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's worth bearing in mind um, if you uh, if you are going to go down this route. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll uh, knock it on the head here because we're 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 done. Um, and all I need to do now is obviously put all me uh, put me bike back together. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, um, then give the give it you know hit that thumbs up button. Uh, leave a comment in the, in the description, uh, in the comments below, uh, and uh, I'll do what I can to uh, to respond. Uh, if you want to, head over to the socials or links to all my social media feeds that are in the uh, in the description. Head over there and uh, make yourself known. We'll have a laugh. It's quite uh, quite quite a comedic scene over there. So um, yeah, hope to uh, hope to see you there soon. You guys take care now. Bye bye.